Emily Chang in San Francisco. As one of the biggest names in tech design, John Maeda was the president of the Rhode Island School of Design, became the design partner at the venture capital firm Kleiner Perkins, and has authored several books on the subject. But he's now decided to leave the world of Silicon Valley in, and instead compete with it head on. Maida recently became the chief experience officer at the ad firm Publicis Sapient to help legacy companies compete with tech giants. And he joins us now here in the studio. So you're still working on some Silicon Valley well, projects. I'm still at automatic leading design there, but I'll transition in August to Publicis Sapient. This is certainly a step out the door of all the jobs that you could have had. Uh, Why do you want to now um, help legacy companies compete well, with Silicon Valley. Well, I have my, I love startups, but I also love end-ups, the companies that have ended up successful and are losing to startups. And I think as startups and big tech sort of like control the world, uh, a little competition wouldn't hurt. What's your take on the tech lash, the sort of wave of anti-tech companies? I mean, all the way up to the, the U.S. government happening right now. I think it's completely natural because if you're here in Silicon Valley, everyone understands computation, the cloud, the invisible world, but people outside it, they don't understand it, so they're afraid of it. Here in Silicon Valley, we're afraid of it because we know what it can do. Outside of Silicon Valley, people are afraid because they're not sure what it is. Mm. So do you think that legacy companies stand a chance of competing with big tech at this point? I mean, it certainly seems like Apple, Google, Facebook, Amazon, they've consolidated so much power. They've got a lot of money, and they've got a lot of smart people, even if they make some mistakes. Um, I think they can. That's why I want to go this direction, um, because I'll, the legacy companies, established companies, are all good at IRL. They're all good at real life. They're good at spaces. And we're human beings. We live in three space, not just on our screens. And this isn't enough. There's something missing in it. It's also a bit addictive and bad. Really? So a little bit. <laughs> uh, so this world of the established companies working in real space, there's a competency here that has to mix with the virtual. So I want to see this competency get better, inject computation, Silicon Valley practices, and maybe there's going to be a way where Silicon Valley's can learn, Silicon Valley, can, Silicon Valley startups can learn from end-ups. So what particular things were you fed up with with Silicon Valley? Oh, I'm... I'm, I wouldn't say I was fed up. I'm more like there's so much knowledge here and capability here that the rest of the world hasn't caught up yet because here we speak machine. Outside, people don't speak machine, and they have biases against it without actually understanding it. So that imbalance is the problem right now. You're actually coming out with a book later this year called How to Speak Machine. What do you mean by that? Um, I think here everyone understands like how, how code works, how network works. I call this kind of like Spanish 4 level competency. But most people don't speak the Spanish of computation. They don't code. They don't sit around and Wi-Fi all the time. So they can't actually speak machine. So how to speak machine is like Spanish 1 for understanding the cloud. So, you know, last time we had you on, I believe, was some Apple announcement. And yeah. I love hearing your thoughts on, on, on Apple design. I know you follow the smartphone industry. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot going on now with the U.S.-China trade war, Huawei versus Apple. Huawei is now being put at a disadvantage selling out to global markets outside of China. Apple at a disadvantage selling into China. Do you think these macroeconomic issues will seriously change the hierarchy of the smartphone industry? Well, um, I think, first of all, we have to recognize that the car industry faced the same problem in the 1950s when cars were a commodity and they had to differentiate based upon experience. So... Apple took advantage of that same moment where smartphones became ubiquitous, commoditized, and they different in experience. Uh, the Chinese are really good at design. They're really good at experience, and they've built amazing systems. And so I think the danger of this separation is to underestimate that the Chinese designers are actually quite good, if not better, than a lot of things that Apple does right now. Like at what? Um, uh, most of the stuff comes from there. So eventually they're going to learn how to make it themselves. Does this mean you think, like, Apple could become the next Ford or, or, or GM? I know those companies are, are, are working on being more tech-savvy, but... It may, be, it may be the Porsche. Um, if you think about it, though, um, Apple's biggest challenger is Google, I think, mm. because of the way they've combined hardware and software together with Ivy Ross leading hardware. She's the real Johnny Ive, I believe, of the Valley. 
Really? Okay, now, now that's a controversial oh, statement. Out, look out, look out. <laughs> Ivy Ross. Ivy Ross. Okay. Oh my gosh, yes. She's amazing. Okay, but Google's phones, and we were just talking about this earlier, they've discontinued, you're getting out of tablets. The Pixel sure. hasn't done that well. I would think, but the Pixel's an amazing device. Uh, I have both. I have the X and, and the Pixel, and the Pixel just has better software. And so at some point, it isn't about the hardware, it's about the engine. Think about the Prius. We like it because of the hybrid engine. So that's a type of technology. Apple's technology and software has lagged Google's, te Google's technology. Now that said, there's an interesting wrinkle in the, in the Huawei story in that Google can't now update its Android operating system for Huawei. Huawei could now be forced essentially to build its own operating system. How big a threat is that to Google and Apple and the two dominant mobile operating systems. Oh, I think like gigantic beyond belief mm. because I think here in uh, US or Europe, we underestimate what's happening in China. Uh, China is the Wakanda of payment tech, <laughs> right? They're like, what are you you're still doing that? We, we do everything with mobile. So if that happens, the difference is going to only increase. Should we be concerned about national security issues? I think we should always be concerned about national security issues, but we should also be concerned that the experience quality in China is improving on all fronts, and it'd be great to learn from them, partner with them. Now, if you think someone at Google is the real Johnny Ive, does that mean you think Apple isn't innovating as much as it has in the past? I mean, what is your... If, what, what grade would you give the pace of innovation at Apple today? Oh, I would give it a B. And this is coming from an Apple fanboy. I had the original Apple II, the original Macintosh, the first iPhone. I have all the devices. Um, but competing now isn't just about the hardware awesomeness. It's about the software awesomeness. You don't think Apple software has an awesomeness? I think it's awesome, but I definitely, I definitely can see that Google software is so much better. Huh. Because it's, uh, Google has mastered the cloud. So Apple is about, is about to unveil in September, we believe, a new round of phones. We have reported they'll be fairly incremental in terms yeah. of design changes. Mm -hmm. What does Apple need to do to, to kickstart innovation or get back to an A from well, John Meta? Well, I would, I would also say that Apple's an A in privacy. Hmm. And that, when we say about Apple's design, we're looking at the fancy graphics and aluminum, whatever. I'd argue that the new aluminum of the Apple phones is the privacy features. So that's also another thing we shouldn't overlook. So I think Apple might win the people who care about privacy. Mm. Uh, Google may win those who care about convenience more. So let's see what happens. All right. Fascinating stuff. John, good to have you back here on the show. John Mado now at Publicity Sapient, Sapient Chief Experience Officer. We'll see if you can help those legacy companies change up big tech. Thank you.